Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Evensong. And today we have a new booklet. Now, in fact, it's a new booklet with very, very old words. So the old words are taken directly from the Book of Common Prayer. But it does include places where to sit and stand. So today I am going to guide us through um, each of each part, as long as I remember to. Um, but it, it's nice to actually know consciously um, when we are doing that. But first, we're going to remain standing and we're going to sing our first hymn, which is number 112. 112. God moves in a mysterious way. Most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, 
and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have heard and strayed from our ways like your sheep. We have followed and marched the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have been against thy holy laws. We have led our blood and sin to be your Lord God, and we have done those things which your heart to have done, and the day of your own hearts. But thy God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfailingly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever.
first lesson. The first lesson is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, beginning at verse 21. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go, select lambs for your families, and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood in the basin. None of you shall go outside the door of your house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike down the Egyptians. When he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over that door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you down. You shall observe this rite as a perpetual ordinance for you and your children. When you come to the land that the Lord will give you as he has promised, you shall keep this observance. And when your children ask you, what do you mean by this observance? You shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, for he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt when he struck down the Egyptians, but spared our houses. And the people bowed down and worshipped. Here ends the first lesson. stand to sing the Magnificat.
The second lesson is taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, starting at chapter 4, verse 23, and ending at chapter 5, verse 20. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness amongst the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all the sick, those who were afflicted with various diseases and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, and paralytics, and he cured them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfil. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Here ends the second lesson.
sing the anthem, which is Cast Thy Burden Upon the Lord by Felix Mendelssohn. Mm -hmm. So is it pie in the sky when you die, or steak on a plate while you wait? You might have heard those phrases before, but um, what they indicate is two ways of people being described as Christian. So the first one, pie in the sky when you die, the impression that you have to live a life of perhaps obedience, a life perhaps of misery, because you're living by Christian rules. But of course your reward will be in heaven, where you will be exalted, then that's where you'll get your pie in the sky. Or perhaps you'd rather not do that and have steak on a plate while you wait. Now, of course, it's possible to have both pie in the sky and steak on a plate. Perhaps it's steak pie. But anyway, two things to look at. And today's quite long reading from Matthew's Gospel, but so much of it so well known, tells us of that dilemma between being here on earth and being in heaven. They're known as the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in heart um, because they will see God and all of those others. They're also in Luke's Gospel um, but slightly different. So the, the beautiful thing we heard about our reading today was that we heard the first bit um, when Jesus was talking to the crowds and then he goes up to this wonderful um, place up on high. And that's why it's called the Sermon on the Mount, because it's up high. In Luke's version, he doesn't go up. So it's a big dilemma as to whether or not they're talking about two different instances, one up high and one, as it said by Luke, on the plain, or whether they're actually talking about the same thing, but they both have a different spin on what was said. And the, what Jesus actually says as well differs slightly, but it has the same idea. So, pie in the sky when you die. Well, the Christian life isn't supposed to be miserable, despite the fact that some may see it as such. What Matthew says is that there will be times in which it's difficult. There'll be times for all of us from which it's difficult. Those are not 
our fault. They're not given by God as punishment or anything else. But sometimes things will be difficult. And at that point, we need to turn our eyes to heaven to see what God has in store for us. But sometimes it will be good. Remember um, that wedding at Cana in Galilee that Jesus went to? That was a good time. That was a good time made good, especially by Jesus. So it's not about being miserable. Steak on a plate while you wait, then. Well, steak on a plate while you wait is, of course, the things that we do here and now. And I think we should be encouraged to value the steak on the plate, or if um, you don't like steak, any other goodness that comes to you now. Because goodness is good. So, the other thing that we read today in that quite long gospel reading is about salt. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And how we become that goodness now is very much nuanced by our Christianity. So we don't necessarily do different things all the time to other people. Many of us work and have jobs not like the one I had before when I was working um, in the insolvency in the government. Um, I was working in the same job that some other people have. You didn't have to be Christian to do that. And that's the case for most of us. But what do we bring to those roles? Well, we bring salt. And it's that flavouring. It's that difference. It's that difference in the way that we are, in the way that we think, in the way that we live out our Christian lives, that turns something ordinary into something that has more flavour. And that's what Matthew is talking about in that Gospel. Whether what environment we live in, our home, school, work, Whatever we do, whatever group we're in, we bring that extra flavour. And it's not about covering up that flavour. It's about letting that flavour flourish. Now, that doesn't mean going to every group and saying, I'm a Christian, you've got to do as I say and start preaching to them, because I think that that would have the reverse effect. But people know about our Christianity. And in a village like this, it's actually quite easy to be identified as a member of the church. And so there's something about us being a light without being anything other than just that. That salt, that presence, that presence of God that people notice, that people respect often, and that people will turn to in times of need. And so, I conclude with the fact that we can have pie in the sky and steak on the plate by being the salt in whatever we do, whatever we, whatever groups we're in, wherever we go, whatever comes in our way. We never know when that salt is going to be important, but what we do know is that it shines. It shines like a light in the world. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, 
who does from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth. Most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign Lord, King Charles, and so replenish him with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that he may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue him plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant him in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen him that he may vanquish and overcome all his enemies. And finally, after this life, he may attain everlasting joy and felicity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Queen Camilla, William, Prince of Wales, the Princess of Wales, and all the royal family. And do them with, their, with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, Prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, we pray for all parts of the world, particularly places where there is conflict, where there is need. We pray for peacemakers. Pray for charities that work in places that are stricken by famine, in places that are stricken by violence, where people are homeless, people are injured, people are dying. In our country, we pray for our government and our parliament. We pray for wisdom, for justice, for understanding. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who are sick in our community. We pray for those who care for them, for their families. We pray for medical staff, doctors, hospitals, nurses, people who work for our NHS in so many different ways. We also remember those who have recently died in our community for Jenny Page, Anne Lacey, Peter Chapman. We pray for their families and friends as they join together to prepare lasting memorials for them. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The notices can be found on the notice sheet where you can pick up as you leave today. Also, um, the notices are online, so if you don't have a copy to take away, you can always check up later. The, um, the, I think the main thing to remind you of is not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday, the 10th of September. It will be the funeral of Peter Chapman here at 2pm. And now, the 100th Club, we've all
all been waiting for. time now for our final hymn, which is number 184, 184, Jerusalem the Golden.